So by the sweet will, on the base of the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the whole parampara and our Gurudev, we are looking for quotes from Chaitanya Charit Amrita in Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. And we came up to verse number 79. So there is a quote from Chaitanya Charit Amrita Adi Lila 4. But first, let us get the connection to the topic and then we hear the quote. So it's in the verse 79 where Sri Rata is the enthroned queen of Lord Brindavan, who is the very heart of all the sweet, amorous, artful love pastimes and who causes the limits of astonishment. <laughs> who is even ordering the Lord himself who is fully independent and of whom goddesses Parvati and Shatsi are mere energies is to be served by me. Yes, this enthroned queen of Lord Brindavan is to be served by me. So this is the prayer of Srila Prabhupada Saraswati. Sri Rata, the enthroned queen, O oh Lord, you are the abode of everyone's causeless love. Everyone is wandering around looking for you. And when they did not find you, their own master to love, their love will act like thieves on them, stealing their holy desires and the items of the worship. And greed and illusion will follow. In this verse, Sri Pat sees Radha as the regal queen of Sri Krishna. So even though the Lord is described here in the verse we can hear as fully independent. Fully independent means you depend on nothing, right? But Actually, the Lord is giving up his independence through the power of the love of Radharani. So she is the real enthroned queen of Brindavan. Because she makes even that independent Lord dependent. <laughs> so who is the real ruler? Two syllables. Radha. So that's why the question may come up, how she is doing that? Only because of her paraki above, giving the Lord paraki above, only in this way. <laughs> She can give him fully astonishment. 
which is also written in this verse. She is giving who causes the limit of astonishment. The limit. She can even astonish a person who cannot be astonished by anything. Who can astonish God? But Radharani's love has no limit and is even astonishing the Lord himself who is actually fully independent. So we can see the power of Sri Radha, the enthroned queen. And in this connection, we hear the quote, Chaitanya Charit Amita Ati Lila 4, Parakya Bhave Atira Sera Ulas, Brat Shvina Ihara Anyatra Nahivas. The extramarital mood has more flavor and joy and does not reside anywhere, anywhere else but in Braj. And again the question is, and who is ruling Braj? And the answer is Radha. Mahabhav in person is ruling Braj. It's her kingdom. And only there the extramarital mood is existing in her realm. So only Radharani can satisfy the Lord to the fullest extent. And we know that all the other gopis living in Braj are extensions of Radharani. Parakya bhave atira sera ulas vrajavina ihara anyatra nahivas. Chaitanya Charit Amrita Adi Lila 4. So this was the quote in verse number 79. If you have any questions, comments, some feelings you want to share, please, anytime. And don't think that you are a disturbance. No, you enrich the whole thing when you share your feelings and thoughts. So please do, if you feel so. There is another wonderful statement in this explanation I want to share. To accept the greatest misery for the sake of Krishna's pleasure and to consider that suffering to be blissful is called Raga. This actually describes what Radharani is doing. I mean, Radharani is a princess. She does not have to take any bad circumstances. Why she should? She has so many servants. But she is taking the greatest misery bad circumstances just to give bliss to Krishna and that is called Raga 
And she is Anuragavati. She is giving the highest taste in Raga to her beloved. And she is taking any circumstance to please her beloved. She has to lie to her elders, slip out of the home somehow, <laughs> meet him in the bowels, <laughs> in the forest. She has to go over slippy paths in the darkness, through the forest where snakes and other beasts are living. And so many miserable circumstances, like <laughs> she's living not in her own home. We all know these stories about, uh, is that man Shrigamutta? Mother-in-law. Mother-in-law, huh? Mother yes. And we all know mother-in-law usually not very good. And in the case of Radharani, the mother-in-law is very messy. <laughs> and she's always looking what she's doing, always ready to give her some bad circumstances and shelter. She is living together with such persons stealing out somehow, meeting her beloved. All this she accepts and she doesn't see it as suffering. No, for her it's bliss. And she is giving this bliss, the highest bliss, to her beloved. So we can understand why she is the enthroned queen because her love is the highest. Because we may say, yes, we love someone, but when it comes to the point to take some bad circumstances to prove our love, usually <laughs> it's over. At least in my case, it's like that. <laughs> and then we see how deep our love is. So we want to learn to love from Radha. We want to get this, this quality of her. Slowly, slowly, it may grow in our heart so that we also can take miserable circumstances and are very happy to serve in that circumstances. So the next quote I found from Chaitanya Charitamrita in Radharasa Sudhanidhi is in verse number 83. And to get the connection, we first hear the verse. Aho, which ignorant soul who wanders after external things will reproach Sri Radhika's dear most devotees who are absorbed and initiated into her confidential moods. Sri Radhika's beloved servants may or may not always follow the prescribed Vedic activities. They may or may not accept very tasty articles like garlands and so on but they cannot be compared with anyone. 
they are the top most devotees. The inconceivable behavior of Sri Radhika's great devotees. I think this is a very interesting point because sometimes we may look from the perspective of Aishwarya Bhav and the behavior in Aishwarya Bhav on such souls and we may think ah what are they doing this is not according to the rules of Vaishnavas <laughs> but here is written they may or may not always follow the prescribed Vedic activities they may or may not accept very tasty articles like garlands and so on. But under all the circumstances, they cannot be compared with anyone. They are the top most devotees. Why is that so? We just heard in 79 what Radharani is doing. Tricking her elders. Is this according to the Vedic rules? <laughs> is this very religious, what Radharani is doing? Meeting in the bowers in the night. A married girl? No. She has abandoned all these Vedic roots. So, in the same way, because the shadows of the original may have similar qualities in some aspects, it may be from outside also sometimes, it may be look like that. But actually, under all the circumstances, we have to understand if we want to live in peace and love, then we should understand that point. They are the top most devotees always. The inconceivable behavior of Sri Radhika's great devotees. Commentary. In Sadak consciousness, Sripat attains a vision of the glories of the devotees who worship Sri Sri Radha Madhava. In the previous verse, he showed how the Raganuga Sadakas never give up their neck beads and tilak that are prescribed in the Vidhi Marga. And how the Sita Bhaktas are not impeded even if they sometimes give up these items out of great ecstatic absorption. In this verse he gives another indication to save ordinary people from misjudging the confidential behavior of such Sadaka and Siddha Bhaktas. So I see no tilak on your forehead, huh? <laughs> I also don't have. <laughs> I have. Oh! But you cannot see you, it. it. You it are is, the real devotee. Hidden. hidden. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a question of outer behavior. It's not a question of following religious rules, regulations. 
Actually, it's a question of the heart. Is the heart at least wanting to follow Swamini and her love, her rules of love? Is the heart attached to Manjari Bhav? Do we have this want for it? This is actually much more important than to follow the rules on the outside platform. Everyone can understand that immediately. Those who have attained faith in the Lord through the scriptures are not even interested in liberation, the goal of Kyanis, anymore. What to speak of enjoyment in the heavenly planets, which is coveted by attached, fruitive workers. Even if he is doing bhajan, a sadaka will not attain brahma, as long he still covets sense enjoyment or liberation. So actually it's very clear. We have five human goals. If you are going after Dharma, Artha, Karma, Moksha, then you cannot reach the fifth, the highest goal of human beings, which is Brahma. You have to give up this four to get the fifth. It's very clear. Srimad Bhagavatam, the wise people of Nameshwaranya in the beginning say, these scriptures are not about Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Not. So what to speak of that here, Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, it's about Rasa, it's not about any religion. Dharma is out. So to follow the rules of Dharma, so what? It's not our, it's, it's not our religion. It's not an religion. It's about love. It's about Raga. It depends on a very deep Sambandha. I love this word Sambandha because it means you are bound by love. So you are strongly bound by love, by nothing else. No rules, regulations, all this. But out of love, two other souls who may not understand yet that the main point is Brahma, out of love for them and respect, you may follow outside all rules and regulations to don't give them disturbance in their mind. That's another point. But then you are doing it out of love. You don't follow the religion. You are actually just giving the mercy of Radharani you get also to others. And we heard, even if he's doing bhajan, a sadaka will not attain Brahma as long he is still covets sense enjoyment or liberation. So are we still in this um, in this thinking process? What next? Bigger car, bigger house, or 
whatever may be the goals, you know, husband, wife, or children, or, you know, if we are still in this bland and we are attached to it, of course, Prema cannot come. Doesn't mean you don't you don't have it. You take your blends and offer it to Radharani. May you do the best for me. I have no plan anymore. I just want to get Prema and whatever is needed on that way, and however it is possible for me, please arrange it and I will follow. So you may have everything, but you are not meditating yourself, I need this, I need that, I, you know, I, this, this, I, 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 I. <laughs> you don't even want to have liberation, because liberation means you cannot have some bandha. If you go in the Brahman, in the light, you cannot have some bandha. And if you see liberation on the Vishnu planets, there is also not lovingly some bandha. It's very respectful. It's not really that kind of some bandha we are talking. So even liberation in what form ever is not the main goal. The main goal is Brahma. The fifth goal is Brahma. And we cannot reach it by doing bhajan when we still have these wishes inside and we covet them, we serve them with our thoughts. So like a baby, we can say, Radharani, I just want to be at your lotus feet and serve you as your shadow. This is my goal and I don't want to think of anything else anymore. The rest will come in my life as you like. Bhukti mukti vanchayati mone hoy, sadhana kolile o prema utpanana hoy. Chaitanya Charit Amitra Matya Lila, Chapter 19. So we should give up these four goals of human beings. Dear Goravani. Rade, Rade. Rade, Rade. Hello. Maybe I want to ask, I have one question, maybe it's okay. Yes. Ask, you know. Oh, please. I'm waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, we always heard that if you want to approach Krishna, that we might make, we, we must approach first to Radharani. But what is Krishna is not our goal. What we must uh, to approach to Radharani to have Krishna. If we are in Manjari Bhava, we only want to approach to Radharani in some way. Of course, to help Krishna in his lilas. But why? Why is intention of this that we must approach to Radha to 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 approach to Krishna? You understand what I mean? Why? I, I just wonder. Hmm? I just wonder if if it was in the connection with this what we read, or because here is written attain Brahma. There is not not written attain Krishna. Yes, sorry. So uh. maybe you understood that that uh, we we want to attain Krishna, but no, no. Here is written Brahma. We want to attain Brahma, not Krishna. It's a goal, but usually always 
also some devotees said, if you want to approach the Krishna, you must approach the But Radharani is our goal. Why, why we need this way to go to Krishna? We, we don't care about Krishna in some way, if I understand really what, yes. what is the goal. <laughs> you are completely right. We don't care about this blue boy. We just no. accept him. We just yeah. accept him as, as the friend of our Swamini. But we want to attain Brahma. That's the point. Because if we don't attain Brahma, then we cannot serve Radharani. And Radharani is Brahma in person. So it's the same goal. And if it's written, sometimes it's written, Krishna. We may also understand that actually this is like, uh, like you say, um, the soul. Yeah? This is like the head. You are a special kind of soul. You are a person, but you are also a soul. So sometimes it's 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 stated like Krishna, and it includes all kind of aspects, also Radharani because they are one, one soul, two bodies. So sometimes it's stated like that, like especially in Prabhupada's books, because they are for 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 a broad uh, um, publicum, for many people who are in different. Uh, Rasas, or maybe in no rasa, uh, just in Aishwarya, in God consciousness. So that's why it's usually written like we want to attain Krishna, like a headline. It doesn't yes. respect the, the different, or it respects all kinds of moods like that. It's not special mood. Yes. Lord, you hear me? Okay. Yes, May I can I hear just... you. Sorry, may I just add on uh, this, also on this prema? As I understand, when Gurudev also says this and uh, says that uh, attain, to attain Krishna, he makes um, a Naglasak accent because because even he it it uh, the meaning would be as I understand even if you want to approach God, everybody sometimes has idea to approach God, even um, okay. Now, not saying just devotees, not without prema, not without prema is essence of breathing. In fact, no, I mean because even I, as I understood from something before, even dharma, kamart, and moksha, they doesn't fun function without uh, without prema. They, they are essences prema. Maybe their goal is their goal is not prema, but they wouldn't exist without prema. So the the goal is one thing, but uh, the, the the core of everything is prema. So, that. yes, and you are right. Even someone who wants to attain Krishna has to first come to prema, because without Mahabhav, you will not move this blue boy. He will be not the sweet humming bee. All all lilas, all lilas wouldn't have any uh, any taste, any and not, nothing without this taste of of prema. And then, then without prema, lilas wouldn't exist. And opposite, <laughs> so it's always connected. Yes, Mahabhav is the base. Like Gurudev said, first we have to reach Gopi Bhav. What he, he meant with Gopi Bhav, he doesn't meant the, the, the mood of Gopi Bhav, that we should be in the mood of Gopi Bhav. No, the stage, because the stage of Gopi Bhav is Mahabhav. Everyone has Mahabhav. You have to first reach that stage of Mahabhav, and then you can go into a special Raga. Without the mercy of Radharani, no raga can go on. Yes, so and even no, no serving, the mood of serving 
it's not serving with, without prema. We may think about attaining this, attaining that, but in fact, we just serve. So when prema comes, then we are inspired to serve this or that. Even it's not up to us to sometimes say goal or okay, goal, gen general goal for our manjaris, but as a manjaris, but you know, it's not sometimes up to us when we uh, relaxed in Prema, I think we are inspired and good luck that it's <laughs> like this. <laughs> Actually, this is the same like we were discussing before. When I say in my life, all my goals I offer to you, to Prema, and may you accept my humble service in whatever form you like. So whatever comes into my life, I accept. And in this way, we want to serve Brema. And whatever she gives us as Seva, we will accept. So we serve Brema. But of course, we want to have a special Seva in a special Raga. We want to have what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu promised us. We don't want to have less. <laughs> Although we have we are bankrupt or at least I am bankrupt. I have nothing to give. The only thing I can offer is my false ego. Please accept that. This is the biggest thing I have to give. But anyway, like a dwarf, I want to reach the moon in the sky. Please, Radharani, let me be your shadow and serve you. And whatever service you want from me, I'm ready to do it. You want me to sweep the floor? No problem. You want me to clean your toilet? No problem. I will do it with my hair. I open my hair and clean it. I should actually clean it with my life airs. So this is what we learn from our Rati, Rati Manjari. So in this way we can start here, in Sadakavish. I want to serve you and whatever you bring in my life, I will accept as the circumstances and serve in that way. So please give me the intelligence to understand what is your wish. How should I serve you? And usually we don't have to think because what is, is, isn't it? Where we are, we are. Whatever the circumstances are, they are. So let's start from there. We don't have to think so complicated. Ah, oh, I'm sitting here waiting for Seva. <laughs> it's there already. You need to cook, isn't it? Cook together with Radharani in your kitchen for the blue boy, for her beloved. And then eat the remnants when Radharani ate it the remnants of this blue boy. So we can start now here in this Sadakavesh immediately. It's not complicated. The only thing is we offer all our ideas, all our goals, all our, 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 our. <laughs> Take it, please. <laughs> I'm ready with that. <laughs> I've planned so many years, centuries. It always collapsed in the end. So <laughs> I'm finished. <laughs> Serve with love. And then we will come up to 
first bhava and then mahabhava by the time. And when we reach that state of mind, then we can render direct service. But first we have to reach that point. And this cannot be reached by any sadhana. It sounds weird because <laughs> for what we are doing sadhana, <laughs> we are doing sadhana to get seva. We are doing seva, the heart gets cleaned. We are doing seva in this sadhak vesh, the heart get, gets cleaned. And all these things which are not needed are thrown out by the time. So by sadhana, we just invite the possibility to serve. And then we cannot say, oh Radharani, you want me to serve, but I didn't finish my rounds, you know, I have to first chant my rounds and, you know, sorry. First program, maybe see us later. <laughs> Doesn't work like that. <laughs> so we have to be ready for seva ready to serve. And that's why Krishna is also saying in Bhagavad Gita that the one is very dear to him who is not attached to his usual, um, how do you say, schedule. Mm -hmm. Usual schedule. Although it, it may be a spiritual schedule or a religious, religious schedule. Because then you cannot be spontaneous in love. So now we are here in verse number 83 and there is another, it's not a direct quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita, but it's an indirect quote, because it's a description about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates. It's actually from Sarartha Darshini Tik, from Vishwana Chakravati. So although a devotee may be hampered by the sense objects, it's interesting because it's also connected with, with what we discussed now. He will not be overwhelmed by them. Although a devotee may be hampered by the sense objects, he will not be overwhelmed by them. This confirms the fact that by the force of devotion, one is unhampered by sense objects, even in the stage of sensual obstruction. That's a wonderful and, and, and interesting point, because we know, at least I know, I have no quality. So I don't have any quality to stop my, my, my wish to, to satisfy my senses. I don't have the power, right? Like Gurudev saying, can you stop to go to toilet? Can you hold it? <laughs> How long? <laughs> Can you stop it? We don't have this power. But by the mercy, and that is the point, by the mercy of our Swamini, it may be there, and maybe we are very young and we have, you know, full power of senses and then it's very strong. We know that now I think we are all a little bit older. We know <laughs> how it was in the past <laughs> and it gets a little bit more slow down <laughs> when we get older. So actually that's the good getting old 
That's the good side. <laughs> You're not forced so much by the three modes of nature anymore. But of course it's a fight. And it's not that Srila Prabhupada Ananda doesn't know that. It's not that Ananda Das Babaji has no experience in that. Of course they all have this experience. And by their mercy, like Vishwana Chakravati Pat is writing here mercifully for us, just as a great heroic warrior may be pierced by arrows when he is about to win the battle, but he will not accept defeat and he will swiftly defeat his enemies, or just as a sick man may get some medicine administer, uh, administer it to him that needs a few days or weeks to work, but he will surely get cured. In the same way, a devotee may seemingly hampered by attachments to sense enjoyment, but he will swiftly be victorious over them on the great strength of his devotion. And what devotion is actually? What is devotion? It's prema, isn't it? You cannot make devotion if you don't have any prem, right? So who is devotion? Our Swamini again. And again only by her mercy we can be devoted. Only with her devotion, at least a drop of it, if we beg for it, if we want it, she will give us some drops, drops of drops, whatever. And then we can have this devotional attitude. Otherwise, not. Without mercy, no way. Isn't it? Otherwise, the three modes will give us mercy. <laughs> and then we will serve again our senses. So it is our choice to choose where we are begging for some drops of mercy. And it starts with our thinking. We think about our goals, we are begging the three modes. We think about the seva of Radha, we are begging Radharani for drops of mercy. So it's here it starts. I want to serve Brema, only Brema, only Brema. Do I have wishes in the heart, material desires? Yes, I have. I, am I helpless? Yes, I am. But I'm begging on the right door. I'm ringing the bell of Brema again and again and again. No other door. Please, please, Radharani, please. And then, if we got some drops, and if we got the taste, and if we develop slowly, rati, which also means love, actually, then we want to serve. Then we say, no, no, no. We don't want anything from you. We just want to serve you. But this can only grow by the mercy of Radharani. Because we cannot have devotion without her mercy. So everything depends on her mercy. That's why we are dependent on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because this is the mercy form for us here in Sadak. That's why it's so important. Yesterday we read verse 1 
of Shishi Dada Rasa Sudanidi in the German Zoo. And it was directly on that point that we need the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because this is Radharani. And this is actually the form she came to give us this mercy. We just have to accept it. So if a devotee is struggling with the sense objects, it's not overwhelmed by them. What to speak then of a devotee in the renounced order? And when such a devotee accepts enjoyable things like garlands and sandalwood pulp, then it is not for the sense gratification. For he is a servant of the Lord so he accepts everything as the Lord's merciful remnants. And here is the point. If we just think about this, here it is said about garlands, maha garlands, uh, maybe some prasad, maha prasad. We accept that. But although we can think about whatever comes in our life is mercy. You have a car, this is the mercy of Radharani. You have a house, this is the mercy of Radharani. You have children, this is the mercy of Radharani. You have some circumstances, this is the mercy of Radharani. So if we think like this, then we can use the mercy of Radharani in the seva of Radharani. In this way it gets a circle, complete closed circle, and we are just going on to serve by the mercy of Radharani. It's not your car. It's the car for Seva of Radha. It's not your house. It's not your possessions. It's not your body. Not your thoughts not your mind, not your problems, nothing is yours anymore. When I'm serving somebody completely, then it's not mine, isn't it? If I'm driving a big man in his big car, I'm just driving it, it's not my car. I'm washing it. I have to take care of it because it's my saver. But it's not mine. In this way, if we see life like that, it is more easy to stay in the circle of Brahma. We just serve, it's not mine. Nothing is mine. I have a problem. Oh, Radharani, it's your problem. Yeah, it sounds weird, but actually this is the point. There's a wonderful story in the book of uh, the holy people of Braj, I think it was, huh? or of Bengal. In one of these two books, there's a wonderful story. Oh, I think it was in Bengal, yes. That I think it was Radha... Radha Raman Charan Prabhu. And he had some disciple. And he ordered him, you go out uh, for alms. You beg for alms. And you bring me everything you got by begging alms. Everything you got. You give me personally. And he did so. And then one person was actually giving him shelter. You know, you are such a stupid person. Why you are here begging all the time, you know, like this. And calling him bad words. So when the disciple came back to the ashram, his, he met his Gurudev 
And then he was actually sheltering his Gurudev. He said, you know, you are a fool. Why are you always begging all this? You know, whatever the other person said, he was giving to his Guru. And his Guru was wondering in that moment and all the people around the devotees were, huh? what happened with him? Is he crazy or what? And then Gurudev followed his disciple because he was sitting then nearby somewhere silently and he was asking actually what happened to you why you are calling me bad words he said oh Gurudev you told me I should give you everything I got by begging alms I gave you everything I handed you all I got rice and you know vegetables and all that and in this moment I also gave you what I got from other people, shelter, everything. I gave you everything. And his Gurudev was completely satisfied. So in this way we can understand that actually nothing, nothing, really nothing belongs to us. We are here in the kindergarten. A playroom. Nothing belongs to us. When you go, you go with nothing. And when you came, you came with nothing. It's just a playroom. We play our rules and we will go with nothing and we came with nothing. Nothing belongs to us. This is actually the truth. But as long we think that something belongs to us, we are in Maya. Because in this moment we think it's different from Radha. Then it's Appa Radha, not with Radha. It's like Prabhupada said, whatever you see, not in the connection with Krishna is Maya. If you see it in the connection with Krishna, then it's not Maya. Because everything belongs to Krishna. So if we see like that, we cannot make any mistake if we are in this consciousness. Everything is Radharani's. This computer is Radharani's. And she is using it for sharings and for other things. Everything belongs to Radharani. And by her mercy, I'm living on her mercy, that water is her mercy. Jai Shri Radhe. Really, uh, Appa in Sanskrit means uh, without. And uh, like selfish also. I just checked because I didn't have idea that Appa means off, away. <laughs> yes, okay. something like A means the other side of the word. Yeah. A Radha means not Radha. Appa means something like gone or far away or split it or I don't know. I don't know Sanskrit. I cannot tell you really what, but something like that. Radhe 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 May I have a question? Yes, you may. My dear, I, um, you talk to me very nicely today, <laughs> like you do this every Monday. And um, when everything is from her and, and I can give her everything. So sometimes I ask myself, like the last days, I made some experiences. One experience hurt me very much. And uh, it, it doesn't take any long time, only a few minutes. And for me, it was clear what I have to do and what was my learning in this. So Swamini helped me to, to um, be conscious about this situation. And the other situation makes me angry because someone um, touches my borders because 
I don't know, also ist über meine Grenzen gegangen. How you say? Um, Crossed your borders. Yes, thank you. And um, I, it was not the first time and the last times I talked to her and, and no, she, she does not understand. She has no feeling for this. So I thought, okay, it's not, it doesn't help our relationship to talk about this again. It's not a bad will to do this. So I, I was asking and chanting, Swamini, what do I have to learn? Huh. And I gave it to her, but always again and again, it came into my mind. Sometimes it's easy to give it to her and, and to sit in front of her and say, these are my feelings. What can I do? Or please help me, mom. <laughs> and, uh, or, or help me to see what I have to learn. What is this exercise? And it came slowly, slowly. And this exercise, it wasn't when, when people cross my border or do not respect my, my doings, my, my, way to to be this came again and again and so i think what is the learning what she gives me and how can i find out sometimes that because there is ego also when there is no ego i always love i'm, I'm in Brema and i have no problems when people cross my borders but here in my and i'm not i'm really low 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 servant um i do not understand this is this ego is this um an exercise do we have some ideas for this mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. first of all i i wonder why people think that learning something does not hurt and we immediately got the point why we always think like this although we have the experience that it doesn't work like that usually it hurts some time and the more it hurts the deeper it goes and then the real theme can show up by the time because in the beginning we couldn't accept it actually but by the time we can accept because we are really 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 deeply hurt and we are really reflecting a long time and then it shows more up what the real theme is. So actually, this is the process, usually. Because if it doesn't take that time and it doesn't hurt, no real change inside of you will be done, actually. At least this is my experience. The more reflected on a thing and the more deep it hurt me, the more it changed my life after that. So actually, I don't think that we have to immediately understand. We should get rid of this idea that we immediately understand, although we try always, again and again. But my experience, after a while, it shows up. We just have to accept the, the, the situation, let it stand there. Your borders are crossed. Okay. Okay. You have to maybe see it from a distance. Because when your borders are crossed, usually you go back or you fight. We don't want to fight, so we go back and look from a distance. Who crossed the borders? Why? In which way? And then we learn from that slowly. And then maybe our borders stay open because we say, oh, actually, it wasn't so bad. I learned a lot. But of course, this is only a theory. When it hurts, it hurts. But what we can learn from Shishi Vilap Kusumanjali is that if we are not in this situation that it hurts, we will not grow. Look at our Goswamis, what they did. Vilapa. It's a vilap. Kusumanjali, it's a vilap. It's, it means he is not happy. <laughs> he 
he is banging his head on the ground he is lamenting the whole time oh Swamini I'm suffering here I'm in this material world still I cannot serve you directly it's a complete vilap complete the whole book is a vilap so do we think that we can you know untouched no border crossed everything fine go back to Radharani no we cannot and that's why we have to go through that situations and they hurt and I can say you are in good luck that this happens because this is the mercy of Radha she wants to to open your borders more because we all have our borders because we were hurt and then in this moment when we get hurt we make new borders you know, and usually not more white, but more close. <laughs> so, in this way, we get more closed. But actually, Radharani wants to have the opposite. She wants to open you. And of course, this will actually go in the old story where you closed your borders. The story has to be touched to open it again. So it will hurt, for sure. That's for sure. The only thing we have to think is, it's mercy. It's Radharani's mercy, so let me stay on that, you know, on that few, and let me see by the time what is actually my point to see now in another light. I have to see it in another light, in the light of Radharani's Brema. Same situation, old story, but new light, new perspective. Because of the mercy of Radharani, I can now have a new perspective. And this is pure mercy. Who can give you such a mercy? Only in love we transform. We cannot transform if somebody we don't love is coming and is giving us shelter. But if somebody who loves us is giving this, then we can change. And in this way, Radharani is giving you now the chance. So please take it as the love of Radha. Don't see the person so much. He's just bringing the uh, botschaft. I don't know what is the word. It's the message. The message from Radha. He, this person who heard you is just bringing the message. But it's mercy. Mercy in a form you didn't expect. No. The, yes, it is, the, it is always the message, but uh, it's not never the same message. Sometimes it's, uh, if somebody really hurts you, you don't have to wait that uh, you are really, 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 really like uh, aggressively hurt by somebody. Then it's also a message that you must, opposite, stay cool and do something for your protection, knowing Radha is protecting you, but really you must be present in this body to say uh, good, uh, right things or act right things, which are not just uh, very, like, senti uh, in sentiment, like, uh, I'm, you know what I mean? Be, be straight in love and, and do what you need sometimes. No? Yes. I think I understand what you want to say. It's not only that you are always soft. Sometimes you have to also defend your borders in a strict way. And this is the learning you have to actually do. It can be both sides always. Usually the old... Uh, story which is usually connected with your childhood and with the connection with your parents the relationship usually this theme is coming up and wants to give you a learning lesson and after learning the lesson we understand what side was meant then we understand ah i need to protect my borders strictly directly with love because it's possible to do it with love uh, or um, I have to be a little bit more soft yeah, and let people come in 
and see what happens because otherwise I will not have any Sambanda with other people. So you will see what was the lesson for you because usually we understand after some time, but not immediately because when we are hurt and it's really low, low, then we cannot think clearly and we are not open. And so take yourself the time, how we say, wound uh, lecken, die Wunde lecken, like this. <laughs> and thank you very much, you both. And for me, now I notice is it's so helpful to talk about the things with devotees. And in this moment, when you are talking, there came a, th a third point. Uh, the point also can be to see this situation like a mirror. And I can ask myself, Do I respect myself enough? How do I cross my borders? And maybe this is one point also. You Thank see, you. <laughs> you see, you understood. By the mercy of Radha, we always understand what is the point to learn. We just have to give ourselves also the time. We don't have to put ourselves under pressure. This is also not love. Love means take yourself time, relax, and learn relaxed. And it's always a mirror. Whatever happens in our life is always a mirror. Always Radharani is taking the mirror and look, you want to have it like this or you want to change? It's always an offer. You want or you want to change? Ah, okay, you want to change. Good, I will help you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the mercy and it's it's you know this is actually what we need we need to talk about our problems we need to share about our problems because then by the mercy of devotees they will feel with you they will immediately give you you know the power of love because Radharani has so many streams and the devotees are always a little stream and more little stream and maybe also big streams and then tuck, it's going like this so we have to be a personal in a personal exchange actually thank you for opening yourself like this and have faith and trust in us thank you for that and we wish you the best the very, very best, which is Radharani's seva and love. Radha, Gauravani? Yes, Vajeshwari. <laughs> what, about, what about the thoughts? Uh, sometimes uh, come to me some not beautiful thoughts, like mm. to hurt someone or really not beautiful. So what to do now? And then um, I stop and I yeah. say, oh, no, this is not me. This is only my mind. But still, it's me. Mm. And who Actually, yes, it's not really you. In so many aspects, it's not really you. But let's think about your childhood. What happened? Was there a person who was similar like that to you? Somebody was maybe some some like that to you, aggressive or, you know, some people I know, my father, for example, he was an alcoholic and sometimes, sometimes he was, you know, breaking out, you know, out of nothing. And as a child, you are usually shocked. And this gives deep impressions. So this energy is coming to you and you are walking with it through your life. If you not find it again, this energy in yourself, and then offer it to Radharani and say, you know, oh, I found another offering for you. I don't want to have this anymore. It's not me, I know, because I am your servant, so it's not me, it doesn't fit. Could you please take it and give me the original feeling back? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
This is our offering, actually. This is really personal offering. Because what you can give Brother Rani, what she has not. Your problems. Your false ego. It's not a bad word, false ego. False ego mm. means your identification is with that. So you think it's you. No, it's not you. It's energy which is now with you because of some circumstances in your life. It came into your life, this, this energy. But it's not yours. It's not your aggressiveness. It's not your whatever, you know. Whatever there, it's not yours. We just said before, it's Radha's. She is the possessor of everything, isn't it? So ask Radharani, could you please help me? I want to get rid of this. I want to serve you in love and peace. Step by step. This is actually our work. This is our active process to help our beloved Radha to help us. In this way we can also do Seva. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for this very wonderful questions and opening up yourself because this is really bringing us forward if we do like that. These are the big steps we are doing, actually, if we find another point which we don't want anymore in our character and we offer it. We don't have to be ashamed. Because it's not ours. For what we have to be ashamed, it's not ours. We can also be not proud, you know, like, oh, I have a big car. No, it's not yours. <laughs> So, if we see it like this, then give everything back to the real owner and be happy. Because this actually makes the life so much more light than the life is. Very light. I don't own anything. I'm like a children. Every day is new. Everything is astonishing. Everything is moving me in some direction I don't know before. Everything is out of love. Every day is wonderful. Full of wonder of Radharani's love. But if I think I own something and I belong to here, to this world, then life is hard. Very heavy. Also, my so-called my bad qualities. They are not my bad qualities. They are just bad qualities. They don't belong to me. I'm a Sevika of Radharani. I don't have any bad qualities. Because I have the qualities of my Swamini. How can I have bad qualities? It's not possible. So it must be Maya. It's an illusion. So please, Swamini, help me to come out of this illusion. I am your Sevika. I am full of, of good qualities because of your mercy. So I think it's a good point to stop today here. And actually it, it fits very much to this theme what we heard about devotees. Actually a devotee of Radharani will never be in trouble really. It seems like it, yes. So many times it seems like it. 
The only thing we have to do is to understand it's not my trouble. Who is taking care of a little baby when the baby has trouble? The baby or the mother? So we have to accept Radharani as our mother first before we can go in Lila. We cannot go in Lila if we don't accept Radharani as our mother. First we have to accept this point because this is Tattva. Radharani is our mother. She will always take care, lovely, always. She is the most lovely person, how she could not. On that base we can have Lila, like a child standing on the table if he doesn't trust the father or the mother. Now I will jump! Please, take me! If there is no trust, no faith, the child cannot jump. There is no blade. It cannot be on the back of the father and say, Hia, hia, go! You are my horse! This is only possible on the base of deep, deep, very deep love, affection and faith, trust. Otherwise it's not possible. So first we have to accept Radharani is our mother. We are her baby. And on that base we can go in Lila. Before it's hard we will be thrown out again because they are bucks. So thank you very much for getting your attention and your open hearts and sharings. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karahani. Nice point. Yeah. Very nice point. Thank you. Thank you, because you brought me to that. Without you opening your hearts, we wouldn't be there now. So. I love these open sharings, especially in small groups. Usually it gets very personal and it comes very, very fast to the point. The other sharings are also very nice and also helpful and of course needed, no, no doubt about that. But especially these small sharings, they are going deeper, more personal, helping a lot. In a few moments, the life can change. Thank you very much. Rade, rade. See you soon.